Hi everybody, I am in such a better place than I was in the last video. Thank you so much to everybody who reached out with your concerns. I will admit I was kind of freaking out, but um, I feel so much better now. I feel like a dark cloud has lifted off of my brain um, and that is such a good feeling and it so, feels so good to know that I have an audience out there who cares about me and who wants me to be okay. Sometimes that's the only thing that gets me through the day, honestly. So my family died. I know, isn't that crazy? Um, I don't know exactly what happened. I wasn't there. Basically, the other day, uh, I invited my parents to come out here and come stay over with us so that we could all have sort of a little powwow, like a family meeting, because I think that that was more than warranted given all of the recent developments. Um, and they did, and, and uh, we all sort of sat down and started talking about things, and, um, and it, it went very badly. Um, I sort of ended up, I got pretty upset and, uh, I was screaming, you know, I'm not, I'm not perfect, right? I've said that many, many times. Um, and, and so I, I, I have emotional maturity, unlike many of my family members. And so I realized that I was getting upset. I realized that I was having difficulty regulating my emotions. And so I removed myself from the situation. Something that I used to tell couples all the time when I was a counselor is, if you just, just go out and go for a 10 minute walk. And I guarantee you, all of your problems will evaporate. If things start getting heated between you and a partner or really anyone in your life, go outside, take a 10 minute walk, drink a glass of water, and you will be amazed that how much that will completely rejigulate your entire sense of emotional being. Um, so I left and I went to the movies. Um, I saw a movie that was so bad that it is not even worth mentioning because I don't want to give them free advertising. But basically, I, I saw the movie and then I came back and I found all of them. I don't want to be too graphic, but they it was a horrible, grisly scene. Um, and I, of course, immediately called the police and they came. Um, and I just think that my theory is that it was, you know, I can't say exactly that I'm surprised because in this town, we have a really bad homeless problem. And so I told the police, hey, uh, Einstein, who's the detective? Holmes, Sherlock Holmes. Hey, Sherlock Holmes. Um, I don't think you need to be Einstein to figure out what happened here. Some crackhead, one of the people that you let run loose in our streets, came over and uh, probably wanted money for, for drugs or hookers or whatever they do. Um, and, uh, and they resented us for our lifestyle. And so they came in probably with a baseball bat. I don't know exactly, but, but it seemed like it was, it was head trauma from a baseball bat. Um, I, the only reason I know that is because I sort of, you, you look at a lot of true crime stuff. And so I can recognize, oh, that looks like the, those pictures that I saw that was a baseball bat hit somebody in the head with a baseball bat. That's what those pictures look like. Um, I have sort of a, a mental Rolodex of crime scene photos. So they, I think, of course, you know, and I don't blame them for doing their jobs. They're just trying to be thorough, you know, because I was very open with them about the fact that we had just all had an argument um, and that I recused myself for the, from the situation. And they're sort of, uh, it makes sense. I mean, I wasn't there at the time and I do feel very guilty about that. I feel guilty that I couldn't help them. And I have some, I have that sort of survivor's guilt it's called because I wasn't there and I didn't stop whatever happened. And, um, and so I understand that they now have to do their due diligence and look into me because I wasn't there. Um, but you know, of course that's, I actually welcome that. 
because I fully want to be able to proceed with this investigation and find whoever did this and know that I was completely exonerated, which I will be. Again, it's just a thing where I think that I've had some, you know, people in my life, I've had a lot of people in my life die of under mysterious circumstances. I don't know why it's, it, you know, just kinda, that sort of thing tends to follow me around. I don't know, you know, if I have bad juju or whatever, but, um, but you know, um, it, there have been a lot of situations where people, I can tell, you can tell when somebody suspects you, you know what I mean? You can tell when I'm, like when I, for instance, when my um, ex-wife and my baby, her baby, um, died in that fire, I would always tell people, and they would get this look on their face halfway through me telling the story, like, and I was like, what's wrong? And they were like, oh, nothing, but I could tell that they were starting to suspect me. And so I would stop myself in the middle of the story, and I'd say, listen, if you think that I did this, that is not true. You, I think, I think it's, it's kind of a situation where so many people watch too many true crime videos and so they want to be a detective they sort of have um main character syndrome and they want uh there to be some narrative because they want their life to be like one of their podcasts and life isn't like that life is sort of arbitrary and meaningless and sometimes things happen that are just tragic and we have no real way to you know parse it out we want somebody to be responsible we want it to feel like our authorities the people that we entrust with the authority in our society are actually doing something um and honestly true crime I, this is probably going to seem a little radical but i think the central conceit of true crime is very conservative um because it's sort of all about distrusting your community um and uh and so anyway, that's sort of a tangent, but, but, but I just think true crime has done a lot of very bad things for the collective psyche of our society. Um, case in point, everybody, you know, when I talk about people dying in my life, they want to, they, I think also in LA, there's a little bit of an element of people are looking at me and they're thinking, could I make a documentary about this guy and get rich, you know? Um, because I have sort of that, sort of that natural, uh, you know, I mean, look at my social media career. Clearly, I'm charismatic because people are invested and they're interested in me. Um, why are you here? Right? So, anyway, you know, I sort of... I would be lying if I said it wasn't kind of a relief. Because, I don't know, I mean... I, I, you saw how I was in the past couple of videos. It was just getting confusing and it was really messing with my head and you know a lot of people very astutely brought up that there were some discrepancies with the timeline you know it's it's you know if, if your sister was 25 years old then how did the how was she conceived from 2007 jar you know and and if augustus was 13 how does he fit into all this um did he did she have augustus when she was four years old i think somebody said and I, all of those things are absolutely true. I never got the answer because when I started reading that, I was like, oh my gosh, I think they're lying to me. I think somebody's lying to me about all this. And that was kind of partially what I was trying to find out during the the, uh, the intervention, so to speak, the family meeting. Um, and I, and I, I asked everybody straight up, are you lying to me? And they all didn't really have an answer. You know, they were deflecting and then, and, um, and there's a lot of crying. And and so anyway, I don't want to get too much into the boring family stuff. But um, I guess the main point of that I wanted to make in this video is that I appreciate everybody, everybody's thoughts. It means a lot to me that you all care so much. Um, I'm doing much, much, much better, much better. Uh, of course, it's terrible what happened. But I am not going to... I think it would be worse to lie... And to say, oh, I'm so devastated, you know, I'm about my family. Oh, no. Um, I'm happy. And I think that that makes me look even less guilty. Because think about it like this. If I was guilty and I did that, I would lie. I would be like, oh, my God. You know, I'd be pretending to be the, 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 uh, the sad brother, father, nephew, sister, whatever I am. Um, and I would be like, oh, what a tragedy. This is so terrible. 
but I'm not. So clearly I have nothing to hide, right? And I know you're probably now thinking, well, if you did do it, wouldn't you also, wouldn't you, maybe if I did do it, then, then you would, if, if you, you're probably thinking right now, if you did it, there's a chance that you would be pretending that you didn't do it by being honest like you are doing. Anyway, it's, it's, I'm just getting into guiltception, right? And that's not productive. Um, but you know, it, 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 that, that, that's the way the cookie crumbles, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So, um, I appreciate everybody reaching out. Um, I think I've said that uh, 10 times in this video, and I apologize. It's just that my mind is really racing these days, and, and uh, I've got a lot on my mind. But I'm excited for the future. To be honest with you, I think that, I think that the universe has a way of sort of uh, um, doing its own housekeeping. You know, it's, it's kind of like if, um, if the dishes start piling up, uh, or maybe this is a better example, a wildfire. That's a pretty, that's a pretty resonant example here in California this time of year. Um, if there's a certain, to a certain extent, some wildfires are normal, right? Because the, 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 it sort of helps to, if a forest grows too wild, then, uh, then um, a wildfire can just sort of hit the reset button, you know, and that can be good sometimes for ecosystems. Um, it's bad when it's caused by human activity, but I think that, I think that sometimes it can be good. So, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say. I mean, I'll, I'll keep you updated, but there's probably not going to be much to update you on because everybody just sort of, I hit the reset button. You know, my life has hit the reset button. I'm so happy. Um, there's nothing I love more than getting a fresh start. That's sort of the silver lining in all of this. You know, this is not the first time my entire family has died, honestly. it's I think it's even the third time. Um, and it's even worse now. I can't even remember. But, but um, every time, you have to look at You have to be optimistic. And you have to look at it from an optimistic perspective. Otherwise, you're going to lose your mind. Um, so I, so the silver lining is that I get a fresh start and I don't, I'm not tied down. It's sort of like I was a puppet and I chopped off Geppetto's strings. So that feels really good. Um, okay. Well, uh, I'll, I'll keep you all updated. If you want to, don't for, I got a lot of cameos. That's really been helping to take my mind off of things these days. Um, you know, and, and, uh, and so you can get a personal video from me and I'll, and I'll wish your friend a happy birthday or something. And you can also subscribe to my Patreon where I have a lot of cool stuff on there. I, uh, I did the other day, I did a tour of my house plants. So that was kind of cool. Um, so yeah, lots, lots to, there's lots to be happy about in my life. A few things to be sad about, but even more to be happy about. Okay. Bye-bye.